Thank you. As I was sitting here in prayer, I could have heard a pin drop. It was so quiet in here. Then all of a sudden I heard a ruckus coming down the hall. I heard noises, I heard voices, and and that's a good thing because that's what this church needs. We need, we need more people in this church, more people to explain to others how beautiful our faith is. So what, what, is, what is this church? It's Catholic, right? It's one. It's holy. It's apostolic. It's Catholic. And so with this evening, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the beauty of this church, not only this building. And Father O'Brien mentioned it in his homily at the 8.30 Mass, and I think also at the 5 o'clock Mass this weekend. But before I do that, I'm going to list this pr- just a short prayer. Uh, so in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you call us all to be one, one with you in all things. You bring about love to all of us. You know each and every one of us by name. You, you're, there's no partiality in your oneness with us. Lord, give us the courage to share our faith, for we are missionary, to share your love and charity with all the world. This we ask through our beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I think this is the first time that I've really had an opportunity to, to speak to a, this class. And so I'm very privileged to be here. I would like to share with you some scripture right off the bat. And I want you to look at some imaging, and that's really important, right here on the altar. And this, this patches that I'm going to share with you comes from the Gospel of John. John chapter 16. John chapter 16 and 17 reveals how Jesus was very, he was in the garden. And this was right before he knew that what was about to happen. He was about to be arrested. He knew that he would be crucified. He knew that he would die. And some call this the agony in the garden. But before that, John chapter 14 is about the supper discourse, about Jesus preparing the apostles about what was about to happen to him. Because he knew they were weak, the apostles. And so I'd like to share this passage from from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 23. And you got to listen, Jesus is down on his knees, and he's in agony, and he's suffering, not in a physical sense, but in a sense about what was about to happen to the, the, his beloved apostles, for they really didn't understand yet about what was going to happen. And Jesus says, I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their world, through the word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they that they may be one as we are one. So Jesus explains in those verses the oneness. The love of God created every one of us. Every one of us. And his love is so intimate. His love is no partiality whatsoever, but that love is if you were the only one in the world That's the love that he has for each and every one throughout the world. And so this oneness is one that we hold dear to because this is what Jesus wanted. One church, one holy, Catholic, apostolic church. So the word Catholic, 
is universal. It means universal, universal throughout the world. Who can tell me the birthday of our church? The Catholic Church. I'm, the, yeah, the Catholic Church. What's the birthday of the church? Pentecost. And so after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes in upon all those after Jesus ascended into heaven. The church began. The apostles, but they had, they had the advocate, they had the Holy Spirit to give them strength and the gifts and that the Holy Spirit gives each and every one of us through our baptism. And I'd like to take you back to March 3rd, I mean, March the 18th, 2018, which is the, the birthday of this church. This is the dedication of this church that we'll celebrate this coming Thursday. And there was an important event on that day. I was standing outside the church with the, alongside the bishop. How many of y'all met the bishop today? Did you see his crozier? The wooden crozier that he carries. At the beginning of, the, of that dedication, he was standing outside those doors. Father O'Brien was inside the doors. He took the butt end of his crozier, the bishop, and he hit the door three times. Now, he didn't tap. He hit it hard three times with that crozier, signifying the Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, was about to enter through those doors, and this church would become alive. We baptize this church. We confirm this church. The bishop took chrism oil all over this altar confirming we had the Eucharist. And so this church becomes one with us. And the oneness that we have is so, this Thursday, if you can, be here at that 5.30 Mass. And each of these candles, these crosses, signify the 12 apostles, the pillars. And so we will light all these candles. They are only lit on the anniversary date, the dedication of this church. So there's four on that wall, on that transept, and two over here, and two over here. And why is that important? I'd like to share with you another passage of Scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. Let me figure out where my... This is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 down to 19. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. How many of y'all have been to Rome? I've been there once. St. Peter's Basilica. If you took a pendulum
and you placed it at the center of the altar at St. Peter's Basilica all the way down to the catacomb, catacombs where the previous popes are all buried, Peter. Center of the altar, St. Peter's Basilica, all the way down, it would be the altar is above St. Peter. God did build a church on Peter. But he wasn't talking about just the building. He's talking about the, the church that we, that we have today. A church that gives us the sacraments. A church that gives us the unity of oneness that we all are in a common faith. The strength that Peter disp disp disposed upon the early church was incredible. Because you have to remember, Peter also denied Jesus three times. Three times he denied him. But yet, he built his church on Peter. And successions of popes after Peter to the present day with Pope Francis. So the church is holy. This does not mean for all members are sinless saints. Rather, to be holy is to be set apart. Her mission is to be salt and light and a communion of Christian love that points to the reality of Jesus as the Savior of the world. The church is Catholic. As I said earlier, which means universal. This is closely tied to her unity and oneness. The church exists for the whole of humanity. When I was y'all's age, I didn't even know there was a Catholic church. I did not become Catholic until I married my wife. And then I still didn't become Catholic. I was 35 years old before I joined the Catholic church. And I witnessed at my, when I was y'all's age, like I said, I, I did not know what a Catholic church was. I did not know a Catholic until I met my wife in high school almost 50 years ago. But her faith bestowed upon me, she never missed Mass. Her love for the church bestowed in her life, in our family. And finally I got the, my hard head was reached. And I saw the beauty of the church at the Catholic Church and it bestows upon all of us. And how we are members of this oneness of God's church. Growing up Baptist, I thought every church was Baptist, Southern Baptist. But how I was, I was so wrong. Not that I was misled, I was just, did not know. And to go around the world, no matter where you go, there will be Catholic church. There will be Mass throughout the world today. Mass was ce celebrated throughout the world. They heard the same scripture passages that you heard today. And it's an example of us, but the church is also missionary in how we, I know it's difficult at times in, your, in our life, but this relationship with Christ and his church is what it's meant to be. And for us to have the courage to go out and proclaim to other people your friends, about the beauty that we have in this the Catholic faith and it encourages us to be missionary, to share charity, to love. A lot of people don't know this, but Father Brian and I were ordained on the same day. I, I a deacon and he a priest. And today we had the bishop come. Just an example of the, uh, the unity in the clergy, holy orders, and how it all comes to be, and how we, through holy orders, through the sacraments, can go out and give witness, to preach, to share the good news. That's what, it's in, that's what you are called to be to go out and be witnesses, missionary disciples of Christ and sharing the beauty that this church brings to us. 
I would like to share with you also that the church existence is rooted in the apostles upon whom Jesus established his church. These apostles ensure that Christ hands on to them is handed on continuously through apostolic succession in the ministry of the bishops. The unity of these bishops is further guaranteed by their union with Rome, where the Pope is the principle of unity for the whole church. And so this Thursday, these candles will be lit all the way around the church. Next year, they'll be lit on, again. That's the only time we light these candles. And we'll celebrate Mass. I would encourage you to be here to, to witness the beauty that, that it is and to share that and bring, bring a friend. Bring a Baptist, a Methodist, whoever they may be.